Hello everyone. Today I'm going to cover the bearing fits between the mating parts in detail. One of my subscribers requested to cover more information related to bearing fits. So I will cover it in this video and if you have any questions please add your comments below. I'll try to answer them in a timely manner. Alright, we will get started. The bearing fits are a very practical topic and it is important because the premature bearing failures can stem from poor fitting or using incorrect mounting techniques. So selecting the bearing interference and correct mounting technique for your application will help you to extend your bearing service life and reduce cost resulting from premature bearing failure. Let's first look into the Tesla Model 3 drive system, which is the engine of the car. If you click the photo on the left, Tesla Model 3 drive system is shown here. And there are bearings, and there is a shaft and a gear, and there is a housing or casing. For Tesla drive, the engine, to properly function, it is important to well define the fit between all these parts. For example, fit between the bearing inner race and the shaft. And also the bearing outer race and the housing. At the end of this video, I'll cover what bearing fits would be expected for Tesla Model 3 drive system. Depending on the degree of the fit, the fit between the parts are classified into three categories, which are loose fit, transition fit, and interference fit. An interference fit, also known as a press fit or friction fit, is a form of fastening between two tight fitting mating parts that produces a joint which is held together by friction after the parts are pushed or assembled. Since the interference fit does not have a clearance, a special technique is required to mount the bearing onto the shaft. SKF, a very well-known bearing supplier, typically recommends using the induction heater to heat up the bearing inner diameter and then slide the bearing onto the shaft and then let them cool down to have an interference fit. There are other methods to heat up the bearing, such as using flames or oven and etc. The use of an open flame to heat a bearing is not only inefficient and less controlled, but also sometimes lead to bearing damage. So this method is not so much recommended. The oil baths are sometimes used to heat bearings but it often takes a long time to reach the required temperature and there is a risk of contaminating the bearing due to dirty oil. So this method is less effective compared to the induction heater. Ovens and hot plates are often used for batch heating of small bearings and this is an acceptable technique. However, for larger bearings, the use of oven and hot plates is generally pretty time consuming. So again, the induction heating technique is less cumbersome and widely used method to mount the bearing on the shaft to create interference fit. All right, let's move on to the loose fit. The loose fit indicates that there is a gap between the two mating parts. If there is too much looseness between the mating parts, it may can lead to fretting. The fretting corrosion is a progressive surface damage that occurs in the contact surface of two metals. This is caused by very slight oscillations and vibrations. So too much clearance between the mating parts will induce fretting as you could see in the photo. So it is important to design the fit between the bearings and the mating parts to prevent these damages, which reduces the service life of the bearing. These frettings caused by too much looseness between the parts can be detected by the vibration measurements. If there is a large gap or looseness at the bearing outer diameter and the housing bore, the bearing will rattle inside the housing during the operation. 
From your vibration measurement, the part rattling can be seen as a chopped signal or truncated waveform from the recorded time domain signal. The FFT translates this truncated waveform in the time domain to the multiple harmonic frequency spectrum in the frequency domain. Here is a better description. As you could probably remember from your math class, the truncated signals or square waves in the time domain can be represented by the summation of the fundamental frequency and an infinite number of harmonics. By using FFT, the truncated signal in the time domain is translated as a harmonic frequencies in the frequency domain. So going back to this slide, if your vibration measurements of your machine shows multiple harmonics, say 1x, 2x, 3x, and on and on in the frequency spectrum, this can be due to the looseness between the parts rattling. These looseness will generate uncomfortable noise and of course can reduce the bearing life, so it should be avoided. The bearing supplier does provide anti-fretting agent that you could apply in between the mating parts, such as bearing outer diameter and the housing inner diameter. This agent is a type of a smooth paste like a grease. So it damps the motion between the bearing outer diameter and the housing. But this agent will not be too useful if you have too much looseness between parts. So it is important to define optimized tolerance range for your application. So how are we going to define the fits between the bearing and the mating shaft and housing? There are guidelines from the bearing supplier. Typically with increasing shaft diameter, more interference fit is required between the shaft and the bearing as you could see in the right table and the figure. The degree of the interference fit increases as the alphabet order increases from J, K, M, N, P. This is due to considering the thermal expansion and the shrinkage of the parts. Also, as you could imagine, a heavier bearing load requires more interference fit between the shaft and the bearing. A certain consumer electronics intentionally designed with loose fit between the shaft and the bearing and uses adhesive to bond the bearing and the shaft. This technique enables high throughput which has a strong benefit for mass production. Because the adhesive bonding replaces the induction heating process, but the majority of the heavy industry products are designed with the interference fit because it provides more consistency. For the bearing outer race and the housing inner diameter, the fit is defined based on the condition of the bearing outer ring being rotating or stationary. If the bearing outer race is rotating, a similar philosophy applies as in the bearing inner diameter and the shaft case, which means more heavier load requires more interference fit between the housing and the bearing outer diameter. If the outer ring is stationary, the bearing fit with the housing is recommended to have a loose fit. For example, H7, H8, and G7. These fits are based on the bearing load and the thermal expansion of the mating parts. And these fits are unique for each and every application. But if you design the fit too loose, the bearing may be subjected to fritting corrosion as I have shown in the previous slides. So going back to the Tesla Model 3 example, since the housing is stationary, it is possible that the fit between the bearing outer diameter and the housing is H6 or H7, somewhere near that range as shown in the right figure. It will be a loose fit, but with a tight tolerance. For fit between the shaft and the bearing, and based on the shaft size and considering the gear load, the fit is most likely K5 or K6, somewhere near that range, as shown in the right figure. 
Today, I've covered the bearing fits between the mating parts, which is critical for the bearings and the machine life. These fits are largely dependent on your application, and it is largely driven by operating conditions and design life of your machine. And these fits can be optimized based on a large number of life tests. Alright, this is all I have for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my next video.